Hello everyone. I am doing a tutorial today for my ivy wall. Um, and so I thought I would start at the very beginning and show you all how I do ivy for 112 miniatures. First thing I'm going to say <clears throat> is that you need to have construction paper, not white paper. Construction paper so that when you punch it, you don't get any weird, unnatural whites coming out on the edges of your leaves. I've worked with green construction paper before, and I know that that's a win. I'm going to try orange as well as a base and see how that looks. I'm going with more of a summer color as opposed to um, autumn colors, which is what I did um, previously. So I, um, I'm going to show you how... I'm going to do summer colors, but autumn colors, you can see I used oranges and reds, yellow, light green, dark green, and just sort of blended them together roughly, and uh, it works fine, even if it's done roughly. So I'll show you how to do that. So another thing you're going to need is these punch bunch punches. Um, and the ones I use, you can just use one or the other, but I like to use both because I like to have the variety, is the Tiny Teeny Maple Leaf and the Tiny Teeny, I think they're called Mini or Micro or something like that, um, Ivy. And uh, so if you have those two, you're good to go. Um, you can just look them up online. Uh, just Google Punch Bunch and see if you can find them. I think I got one on eBay and one on Amazon. So... There you go. Those are your two your two punches. And I'm going to show you some of the leaves that they make um, in fall and green colors. And I'll, I'll show you uh, some pictures of my little ivy wall as well with these, made with these. So, whoops, sorry. <laughs> there you go. So, there you go. But today we're going to do summer colors. And so, whoops, let's pick up these little stragglers. And you're going to need acrylic paints. Um, I just use these cheap ones um, that I get with art kits. They're great for just general use. And I'm going to do a little bit of yellow, um, some light green and dark green and um, chrome green. What they call it? Chrome green, deep green, and what is this? Lemon yellow. So other things you're going to need is... This is for the building process, but it'll give you time right now to go out and find them. Um, these are little branches from our blueberry bush that died, um, but these will serve wonderfully to work as the, uh, as the structure of your ivy bush. And also, these guys work well for when you're trying to do vines that stretch across certain areas so um you can buy these at the craft store as little wreaths or different types of things and then you can unravel them and you have all these cool little vines that you can use to kind of bend and glue them along your surface of your your building so there you go um there's a big one and then there's these little teeny tiny ones um you probably have to use more of these than you need to and they also have a wire that's really thin that you can use too so all right, so the first thing we're going to do is I have my two very cheap IKEA brushes, which I use for pretty much everything, and I'm not very good at that. I have um, a lot of brushes that I use just for this kind of stuff that they're like throwaway brushes, but I use them over and over again and uh, just wash them out with the spray, with the sprayer, and they get a little stiff, but you just have to soften them up. Um... So I've got some light green, some yellow, and the deep green, which is really the closest to real ivy color. So I'm going to use a lot of that. Okay. All right. So we're going to start with the green paper. Now, I want you to realize that you have to do both sides of the paper. You can't just do one side and then have your leaves um, kind of a weird, like this is a very synthetic looking green. It's not a very natural looking green. And you don't want that on the underside of your leaves because you want the dimension and the color that the, var the variegated colors gives, not this ugly um, sort of, and then just a natural looking green. And then just, here you go, as you see. Now you can make the green a little darker. 
um, by adding just a just drop in a little bit of black and just mix, let it mix in as you're sort of and then you can do this see how it kind of spreads out and becomes a very dark green like a pine green and it's okay if it's dark that looks good actually I'm happy with that and then mix in some more this green seems to have a lot of blue in it this one right here but it'll work and then you can lighten it up with a little bit of white too um, if you want to make a different different value of the same color so this white is almost empty but yeah I tend to abuse my and then just mix it in if it's too light just add a little more green and you get like this luminous kind of green put a little bit of yellow green on there looks like the white brings out a lot of the blue I'm not too fond of that so we'll keep using the, the darker stuff instead and brush strokes and stuff like that it's totally fine um, because your leaves are gonna be so little it's only gonna show a little bit of variegation um, and it'll look natural so yay we want natural and I'm going all the way to the edges yes I don't have a lot of um, care about this cutting mat I actually used a heat gun near it and it's all buckled <laughs> so, but I, I don't have it in me to throw it out yet so I need to get a new one they're so expensive I don't know why but ridiculous these craft stores and art supplies people so yeah I'm, I'm working on more greens in this wall but still you're gonna have leaves that are you know sacrificial leaves or some bug like you know chewed chewed its stem and it turned yellow and some of them might have little holes and black marks on them and so no ivy wall is 100 percent uniform it's gonna look fake if you do too uniform so all right i'm getting close to finishing this side I'm gonna do the edges i don't want any of that electric ugly synthetic green coming through so i'm trying to I need a little bit of water <laughs> the spray bottle in this context and in pretty much any situation where you're using acrylics is always great i use it to clean my brushes instead of just dump, dump, dumping them in water i will spray them out and then daub them dry with a piece of fabric and seeing that i have every craft humanly possible in this little space I have no shortage of pieces of fabric to use as wipies. Okay. I like this. I like this color. I like the variegation. I like I like that darkness. I'm gonna put a little bit here. Cut up that bluish green. There you go. And now I'm just gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do it all over again. So Let's try that and then I'm going to try the orange paper. Okay, that one's done. So let's set this aside to dry. Okay, and now we're going to just play around with the orange. I'm curious to see how the green's going to look on that. Ah, uh, no. That's just ugly AF. So that's a no no. We'll go with the, uh, with the straight green. Bye bye. Okay, so. I will be back for the next step. All right, so the next step is to use lacquer. You can use a polyurethane sealer, um, anything that is going to seal it and, believe it or not, strengthen it. So you're putting like a little layer of plastic over it, but also it gives it the shine that leaves have, and it also will lengthen its life and strengthen this very now very weakened um, paper and you want to do both sides so take it outside once it's dry spray it down flip it spray it down and let it dry 
All right, so while everything is drying, I have my street scene, or if the case of maybe you're doing a, a lattice from your, you know, your dollhouse garden, or um, a shadow box scene just like this one, or the front of your dollhouse, um, the first thing you want to do is while this is drying is to start sort of conceptualizing where you're going to have your, your ivy go. So... That's not going to work, is it? <laughs> but if I go lower, maybe it will. So that's an idea. Um, this one is... This one might work pretty well. Let's put it... No. It's sticking out in a strange way, though, here. Well, I can always break it and then re-glue it. The good thing about this is you... You can cover up all of your breakages with ivy. <laughs> So, so it will, um, it's pretty flexible. Ooh, I like that too. We'll have it go up this way and then curl around this way. Now, ivy is always looking for the sun, just like any other plant. So it's going to have a pattern on how it kind of lays itself out. It's going to go, you know, horizontally searching out open spaces, and then it's going to have its vines going up um upwards so yeah these branches are pretty brittle so I'm gonna have to be careful but so far I kind of like this one so we'll go ahead and put that here there. and and then maybe we'll have this one come off here there you go all right, so I can start sort of getting an idea of where things are going to go um, and figuring out where I'm going to attach things and maybe have this come up this way. Most of this is going to be covered up, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But that is how you start sort of conceptualizing where things are going to go. And I do like this little thing that I'm doing here. There you go. And then you can fine tune it as you go along. All right, so start doing that while your leaf paper is drying and then uh, you can start affixing it. I usually just use straight PVA glue. Um, I use wood glue for the most part. I might use super glue in this case um, just because it has a quicker grab on things. And then I'll use some of these little branches because you want to have branches revealed here and there you know, no wall of ivy is 100% solid. Um, and there you go. So you see, it just, you just have to wing it. And hmm, maybe have this one go out over here. There you go. So up and sideways. And then imagine that it's always going to be going towards, towards the sun. Uh, and then once I get these affixed, we'll start leafing. And it's tedious as hell. But man, if you're doing it the right way, it looks so good. Um, you'll be patting yourself on the back every time you look at this thing. So, As you can see, um, I'm pretty messy with how I'm gluing it, but most of these areas are going to be covered up with millions of little um, ivy leaves. So don't be too fussy or persnickety. Um, I also had one more thing to say about these things. These are um, pretty smooth and I think it's lacquered or there's some sort of treatment on them. So before you use these, I would take a piece of sandpaper and score them and make them a little rough um, because the glue just does not stick to it as well and your leaves will fall off pretty easily if you don't prepare the surface on these ones. But since I'm using natural sticks with natural bark, hopefully everything will be fine. So um, we'll figure it out. We'll find out. Um, I'm going to let this dry and uh, and then I, this is almost dry. It's still got a little bit of moisture on it, but once it's fully dry, I'm going to start punching and making leaves. So um, I'll just do that off camera and then start gluing them on. Uh, when I start applying them to the scene, I will um, start the video again. So <clears throat> I have glued on my branches, as you can see. 
There's still some glue blobs there, but that's okay. Um, and I wanted to also show you the ivy wall I was talking about. go. That's Griff. All right, so back to the grind. Now I have done a few, punched a few of the little leaves. They're still a little greener than I would like, but I will probably mix them in with different values and hues as I go along, because I might have to punch out more, because I want to do most of this wall. So... We'll just start with the basics, and you're going to need your glue. I use wood glue, PVA glue. Um, now let me get my my paint tray. I, I just always find these random things. I never reuse them, and so I end up like trashing all sorts of lids and whatever, and then throwing them out because um, I'm such a disorganized person. Um, there you go. So there's some glue. And you're also going to need, if you don't have these, I recommend um, you use anything with like maybe a em embroidery or upholstery needle or something that's thin and sharp. Um, this is a clay tool. They have different sizes on them. And what I'm going to do is use this to give each, yes, each and every leaf proper shape. So, you can see this here. I'm trying to make sure that it focuses, but it's hard. All right. I've got a leaf. I kind of like the other side better. Yes, and this is why it's tedious, because you are doing each individual leaf. So you're doing a center vein and then a vein down this way and a vein down this way. And as you can see, it gives your leaf kind of a, a little bit of a cup shape. See? Now I'm going to push, push the little leaf stem back. And then, of course, I wasn't prepared, so I started filming without getting all my tools together. Typical me, typical me. And, uh, there you go, tweezers. So I'm going to grab my tweezies and I'm going to poke it, the stem, into the, into the glue. So you can see it's got a little dot of glue on there. And I'm just going to plop it into place. So, and thus we begin. So I'm going to do a few and then I'll probably just do the uh, time lapse as I work. I think that'll be a lot easier than you sitting here listening to me jibber jabber while I make leaves and I can listen to my podcast. So, all right, I'm getting started. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a little bit of a start. It looks a little chaotic, but wait until I start adding and fluffing and everything. And yes, I used the word fluffing. Um, we'll try and forget about that right now. Anyway, um, but I wanted to 
talk a little bit about the direction of the leaves because if you see a lot of the little um, vines that on some miniature uh, scenes um, clearly the the person has uh, who applied it is getting it from um, they get a little a little string of leaves and they just glue it down and you know the leaves kind of go out side to side and they snake them around um, and vines generally don't grow that way um, and what the hell did I just lose my I did I lost a leaf um, vines generally don't grow kind of willy-nilly and snake around and go up and down they, they're looking for the Sun and the leaves grow with their faces oriented towards the Sun so um, you're not gonna have leaves that are pointed in all different directions if you look at a wall of ivy all the leaves are pretty much facing the same direction and the same angle so that is what I'm working towards and the only ones that don't do that are when they're sending out um, their little exploratory limbs and their little um, little mini branches then usually they kind of they'll they'll reach out and little tiny leaves will grow up grow out kind of side to side on it but as soon as it becomes established the leaves will or rotate themselves to face the Sun and they'll grow more leaves and get fuller so looking at pictures of ivy walls taught me a little bit about how to apply the leaves and as you can see they're all facing with their little palm towards the, 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 the what I would call the palm of the leaf which is um, towards the Sun so they're all kind of like this and no matter where you go and where you pile them on they're gonna be point down pointing down towards the ground and then oriented towards catching as much light as possible whoops I just knocked this one out so that is what I am doing yes it's super tedious um, but it is a good thing to do when you're listening to a podcast I tend to be obsessed with true crime I try to watch my favorite Korean dramas um, while doing this but I have to I don't understand enough Korean to do it without reading um, subtitles which is such a bummer so that's one of my goals is to learn enough Korean so I can watch their TV and media without relying on my eyes being on the screen all the time but and so my compromise is to listen to podcasts and I listen to a lot of true crime I guess it's a thing now and that's what I do while I'm doing these uh, time-lapse uh, sessions I should say now it is close to midnight so I don't know how much longer I'm gonna go on for tonight but um, I'm just gonna keep plugging away and when these are dry I'm gonna keep pushing them down a little bit um, so that they're not pointing so horizontally right now but as you can see I'm slowly spreading the growth I also mixed in my autumn colored ones I figured what the heck because they were just sitting there anyway and I can always make more and it does add a really nice variety of color to the leaves so I'm doing one vein down the ivy leaf and it makes a cute little cupped leaf as you can see oops so there you go and then I am grabbing it by the tip folding folding down the stem dipping the stem in glue and then dropping it on the branch now there's not going to be a ton of leaves on the branches they're mostly going to be on the wall because that's where the broadest space is to grow for the leaves to catch the Sun so the branches are going to be kind of snaking in and out of the growth as I go along this is going to be a pretty big project probably even bigger than my dollhouse I think because I really want this to be full of ivy leaves so a lot of the brick is going to be hidden this mostly is going to be hidden um, the edges of the windows are going to be kind of crowded with with ivy leaves if you've seen I've already started placing them at the bottom as if they're kind of nested 
in a little a little uh, bed of ivy leaves and it's starting to look good already I think maybe I'm just tooting my own horn but that's it for today and I will continue to work on this and do some more time lapse as I work my way up this side and across and across the bottom and eventually end over here by the um, rusty pipe there you go and then I'll have maybe one or two tendrils kind of sneaking over onto the store at least some leaves but um, and of course a few covering the electric box but so far so good I might actually install curtains and windows in between because sometimes I like to break up the tedious projects with things that are satisfying so that I am not bored to tears. All right, so part two coming soon.